Okay. Well, I am David Seamer, uh, Disco Bots at Lamar in Houston, Texas. And we are about to start our CAD collaboration for over under the 2023-24 Vex Robotics game. And I believe we might also have time to analyze a mini swerve, an FRC drivetrain uh, towards the end as well. Okay, got more people coming in. I'm gonna try to uh, go ahead and share my screen and we will talk about uh, the Lamar Vex robot first. So I'm displaying that first. I'm gonna go ahead and admit these attendees. All right, so this is the Lamar progress so far for the over under design. And uh, I'm also going to make sure that I share a link to this in the chat. And in just a moment, I will be turning it over to our captain sawmill who could talk about the design that you see on screen. And then we will send it straight to Canada after he's done talking. Um, let me go ahead and make sure to share this link in the chat. And now, Samuel, are you in the meeting? Okay, I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Sawmill. So, well, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, looks like it's successful now. Just mute, Mr. Mute, Schumer. Mute. Yeah, hello. We're all in one room. Here's the team. There's Mr. Seamer. And we're very excited to be working with you guys. In the meanwhile, as I try to share my Fusion 360, did I get it? Okay, I think I got it. Good. Very nice. First, I'll just uh, begin by turning off all these joints because they're coming in the way. Okay, here it is. This is our uh, interpretation of how our first under over robot should be like. I can just briefly give an overview beginning with the drive base. We put on the four inch wheels so that it can have maximum chance to go over the barrier. With the four inch wheels, we also have bolted them to the lower level of the C channel to have more ground clearance. And on top of that, for even more barrier boosting capabilities, we added these uh, laser cut plastic pieces that we are able to use as a ramp to be able to give us more leverage in climbing that barrier. 
it runs on the ratio of 36 tooth gear to 72 tooth gear. So you can see that's doubling of the torque, halving of the speed. And it all obviously runs with the blue cartridge, six motor drive. So it's six motors, uh, blue cartridge, and then 36 to 72. So 300 RPM on the four inch wheels. That's the main idea of our drive base. Of course, we have the same barrier boosters on the other side. Moving on, we have a catapult located towards the center of our robot. This catapult is uh, it's meant to launch the tri balls over the barrier out to the other side. Obviously, you can human load into it. And the catapult runs on a red motor. So it runs on the 36 to 1 cartridge. And it has the ratio of 12 tooth to 84 tooth, which means the ratio is one to seven. So seven times the torque, and hopefully it'll be rubber band powered somehow. We might increase this C channel length right here just to be able to put rubber bands from the top section of it going downwards. The catapult, it's a bit hard to see because it's the way it was jointed, it's intersecting with the robot right now, but this is the chamber, this is the arm where it holds it. It's you can move it around if you download the Fusion 360 assembly onto your own laptop, you'll be able to move it with the Revolute joint. But the tri ball sits inside here. We have this prototype actually. It's pretty. So we have this uh, we have this plastic piece prototyped and it works quite well. The catapult arm and launching the tri balls over. And lastly, also to intake from the ground and other places, we have our own two flex wheel intake. Both of these wheels are run by a half motor, so the 5.5 watt motor on each one, and it'll be chained up so that tri balls can come in here from the floor to go inside the catapult, or they can just be put on top of the catapult itself. My vice president has also brought over this. This is our catapult arm that we were able to prototype. It's pretty nice, and the tri ball fits well in here. That covers uh, most of the features of our robot. We do have a planned climber that will go on this back empty section. And currently the entire robot is under 10 and a half inches. So it can go under the high barrier. Is there any questions about this? Uh, what was the drive ratio? Oh, hold on. I couldn't hear you exactly because uh, my volume is too low. What was the drive ratio? The drive ratio is 36 tooth gear to 72 tooth gear. So you can imagine it's a two to one. Okay. So overall, the wheels are spinning at 300 RPM, the four inch wheels. Okay. So, Somil, I have a question here. Uh, yes, please. So, so you're using uh, the blue cartridge, which is 600 RPM, and then mm -hmm. you're getting it down, right? Correct. But why are you doing that when you can achieve uh, a uh, gear up ratio with 600, uh, sorry, 200 RPM cartridge. What's the reasoning behind gearing it down from uh, 600 to 300? Uh, one of the fun facts about gearing it down is when you gear it down, you also gear down the tolerance. So the backlash within the system, it makes it better for coding autonomous because uh, when you gear it down, basically the slight tolerance between the gears, it also becomes smaller. And another fact is just because we wanted to achieve the 300 RPM ratio. So it's a, uh, I think it might be difficult to do with the other gears, like if you started on either a green or a red. But the main reason of always gearing it down, for example, in all our past years, we also geared it down just because it reduces the backlash a lot. But don't you think that you'll be compromising uh, on the torque of the motor? Well, uh, when we gear it down, we increase the torque back up. So. For example, it starts. No, I know, I know you do that, but you're yeah, doing yeah. an external, you're doing an external gear ratio, uh, reducing the gear ratio on the external system, whereas yeah. you are basically compromising the internal motor uh, uh, torque. So, so if you use a 200 RPM cartridge, you have more torque. Okay. Whereas you, you, you are, you're using a 600 RPM cartridge, you, you are compromising on the torque. I'm just throwing it out there because we have we have been debating on this and mm -hmm. and I usually love to have a detailed uh, uh, debate and and all this so that's the reason I'm asking you but I'm not saying it is good or bad yeah, yeah. I'm just I just I wanted understand. to pick your brain but I do understand mm -hmm. why you want to do this okay yeah, my second question is uh, you have this uh, RAM that you guys have built and I'm assuming uh, you will be using spacers over there correct yeah these are some black 
spaces, spaces. in between. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my third question is, uh, with this catapult, uh, are you just planning to throw the tri balls on the opponent side? The the hope is yes, it will just uh, go on to the other side to score those offensive points. Currently, it's not meant to aim directly inside the goal, because okay. according to uh, many people who have the fields, we currently don't have our fields. It doesn't quite work that way. Like it's hard to do that. But have you considered any other design options for shooting straight into the goal? Uh, okay. We 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 cut we considered a few, but according to people with fields that were on the internet and were willing to share as well as just our own analysis because we got the field CAD and we tried to build some prototypes of the field ourselves. It was uh, incredibly difficult and we felt it was not worth that much time, especially for a version one robot to try to okay, push so the eyeballs okay. precisely in. Okay, because I don't know, I mean, uh, we, we can speak on, on, on the experience we have in Ontario, which is a very competitive region. We yeah. always see that uh, usually, I'm not sure about Texas, but our, our competitions will start sometime in, I think, late November. And I've always seen that teams are very competitive. So sometimes when we start uh, thinking about uh, these uh, design considerations and we, if we don't think too much of offensive, then we realize that we are always uh, left behind. So, course, I mean, yeah. we, we, were, we are considering to uh, look at the design that we can shoot straight into the goal. So like puncher. So mm -hmm. we have Definitely seen some videos, be. yeah. Yeah, definitely okay. would be really cool if that was possible. But from the current state of the game, it seems like it's going to be a very difficult thing. And I think based on the game designers, they tried to make it so that it was impossible or not feasible. Okay. Also mentioned your hot swat technique. In fact, you are expecting those drive based motors to get hot really fast. Yeah. That's another consideration that they, mm -hmm. it probably is not something that they've taken into account. Yeah, I think a lot of teams, they forget when designing their drive base is to not stack the motors vertically too much, which is what Mr. Seymour was mentioning, because uh, yeah. when you do this, it just makes it hard to hot swap the motors. So that's one thing that we have laid out nicely. Yeah, no, that, that's right, yeah. I think we are in alignment with that, yeah, for sure. Sounds great. I think uh, we have some, uh, we have uh, Tristan, who's one of our mentors uh, joined. Tristan, any thoughts? Hi, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear. Yeah, we can hear. Okay. Um, yeah, I was actually wondering, um, is this kicking it under or is it like tossing it over the catapult? The catapult is to toss it over. Okay. So how does it exactly rotate? It's the Lexan part, right? So... Correct. Yeah, here. I'll try to activate the joint and do it. So um, basically, this is the axle where my mouse cursor is of that okay so it's kind of like a kick but it's like kicking it upwards it's it's just a classic catapult i think you might be confused just by the angle it's at right now because uh when we were catting we just had it at 90 degree angle so that's how it is just oh. it over like this. yeah i think yeah that's and the, 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 resting, okay. the resting position is uh about right there oh i see okay I might, so have you guys considered punchers instead of catapults though at all? I'm sorry, I was not able to hear you. Have you guys considered punchers at all yet? We considered it slightly, but we felt the odd shape of the dry ball and also just the simplicity of a catapult. There's not much, uh, there's not too much more merit of a puncher over a catapult design. Okay. Well, that's interesting that you guys are trying this because I think uh, most of Canada, like from what we have so far, want to try punchers, but yeah. it's early right now. So I think it's good that we try different things and see what works. Definitely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, yeah because we, the we way work, are... yeah, we are working towards puncher. Cool. So I think we'll, we'll see some different results for sure. It'll be pretty interesting. Yeah. Usually the way uh, our team operates is that we try to make one robot really early that does the game tasks quite reliably. And then for our second robot, we make the more complex mechanisms. So we just felt like catapults, it's like tried and true method. Everyone knows how to do it. And we basically are guaranteed, we know for sure that a catapult will work. While no one on our team has built a puncher before and it's not so clear whether a puncher can work or not. That's why we went with the catapult because uh, like from our perspective, at least we don't see any disbenefit. No, that's okay. I mean, at least you guys are trying this. If we try, 
uh, puncher will will see results and then we can share those results and then yeah, you guys 100%. can think it'll about a, uh, yeah yeah it'll be great how many uh, teams do you guys have we are currently having about three yeah three teams this is a, and you guys are 2587 correct yeah so oh. this time we are under the label of 2587 we have a s k and v uh, and then uh, I know 285 is also Discord, but they're from the other school, right? Carnage Mellon? Correct, yeah. They, they, they're they also part of the Disco bots. They have their different number. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering. Next time, maybe um, we should also add them into the meeting. I don't know if we, we were trying to do that this time. Receive notification. Yeah, I don't think they wanted to join this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to talk to them. Yeah, I heard that the, I heard that you guys were not... You guys are... Um, the cooperation is just not there. That's what I heard between all through the disco bots, but yeah. So then, I mean, um, I'm not sure what that means. We do share fields and share parts. And no, all that. no, no, like we're just like we struggle to get in the same meetings and stuff. Like all, all three, all three teams. Perhaps I mean we can take a look next time how that can be done better. Yeah. Do you, yeah, do you I think have a cat that you want to share. Uh, so we don't we don't really have a full cat yet. I, I have some photos of some of some early designs that we've been working on. But right now, since we have like um, like f around five teams, we're working on um, everyone doing something different. Yeah. And then, uh, so some of the like I think two teams are going for four motor drive with uh, seventy two to forty eight gear ratio. Um, and they're all all the drives are gonna be six wheels. Uh, and then and then they're looking at going with the front intake. One of them will make a top top mounted intake, and then one of them will make a side mounted intake like yours. And okay. they'll be they're gonna be um, punching backwards. Yeah. And then the the other one, the other the other robot we're trying to make is uh with the sprocket, eighteen to twelve, uh eighteen to twelve tooth uh gear ratio, all four inch wheels. Uh, this one's gonna be six motors, and uh this one this one is um also gonna be a puncher. Um, and I guess that, that's about it. That's like, we're, yeah, we're, if, we're just if you have pictures, do you want to like? Yeah, here, I'll screen share. Screen share? So. Right now, and there's one more. Screen. There's one more thing that we are trying to work on, Somil. I see on your intake rollers, you are planning to use these flex fields, right? We oh, yeah. are thinking of using uh, uh, sprockets and uh, flaps. And I'm not sure if you guys have done some research. Uh, there was a game in 2014 called Toss Up. Uh, and uh, we actually built something called uh, uh, those uh, intake rollers uh, using sprockets and flaps. and uh, it was very popular. It, uh, it it was like a magic intake. So we were able to intake the elements uh, uh, from somewhere I would say more than 180 degree, 180 degree angle, and it uh, brings uh, those elements straight in, into the into the tray. So we are thinking of it was toss up. Look at look at toss, toss up 2014. Yeah. Okay. Are you talking about the sprockets where it has a chain attached? Yes. On? Yes, okay. David. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. So I want these guys to do some research on that because that was a very precise intake system. It yeah. used to uh, pull all the elements towards the robot. That is we that that will be that will be a key uh, thing in this game as well. Yeah, yeah. we were definitely we were trying to consider that, that. but uh, the reason we put flex wheels. It might be easier to unintake from the catapults. Oh, well, that's fine. To, you, for you, example, you guys, yeah, you if guys. If you have it you in the guys... catapults, but you want to now be the scoring robot and put it inside the goal, then it might be easier with the flex wheels because they would probably have more tension. But no, no, it will be definitely a cool point to experiment on. Yeah, I mean, we are trying those uh, uh, sprockets and flaps, uh, and you guys can uh, work on the flex wheel. Then we can. You know, once we do some testing, we can compare our testing results and we'll mm -hmm. see what is optimal for the robot. Then we guys can adapt and, and change those. Yeah. Sounds great. All right. Um, let's see. Chiku, do you one have second. any? One second, I'm about to screen share something. I'm just looking for a few things. One second, guys. David, as I said earlier, like, uh, we, are, we, we don't do a lot of uh, cadding here uh, and I need some help from you. Uh, but uh, I think it's like bits and pieces. So uh, I mean, you won't be able to see a full robot right now in in our cat. But if you are planning to do any sessions for Fusion 360, uh, then let me know. I can invite these students and they can learn from you.
And so there's one more thing that we are doing slightly different. Uh, we are, I think Chico, if I'm not mistaken, instead of three Omni wheels, we are doing uh, two Omni wheels and center will be the traction wheel, right? Yeah, so we're thinking of trying out uh, some of the robots with traction. Uh, yeah. Flexos in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me screen share now. All right, so so then this is, I guess, um, the drivetrain. I don't know if you guys can see. So this is a 72 gear. Uh, and then I think they're making a mount over here for the puncher. We haven't really made a puncher before either, so it's going to be our first time. We've never made a puncher or a catapult. We've always made flywheels. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, and then this is like a, this is an, a different, this is another angle. I, I, I'm not really sure what's happening here, but because I didn't cab this one. And this is going to be the the sprocket one. I told you really we're really early right now, early stage, so we don't really have proper CADs yet. I feel like the mounting here is a little awkward. I didn't CAD this either. Uh, it looks like the motors are a little bit too high up. And then uh, we were looking at like lifts. So then we looked at this FRC lift, and we were thinking that this is a possible idea without using string though, like with the metal uh, version of this. Like it would be different. It wouldn't be a winch. But it seems like a good way to hang a robot. I don't know what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, I mean, we are still prototyping our hanging stuff. We don't have any solid type of mechanism yet. We were thinking something like a levered system because the main trick with the hanging and the main challenge will be generating enough traction so that and friction so that you can actually stay up because pulling up is not that difficult if you it's achievable the main thing is staying up so the main inspiration will be trying to take any of our vertical downwards gravitational force and translating some of it into normal force to create friction okay then there's also this one i think this is similar to what you're talking about i don't know if you guys have seen this video It's interesting how it grabs on like that over there. And then I was I was looking at this video. I don't know what the accuracy on this is, but these guys are able to shoot the balls very easily. So I don't know if they built the field wrong. But then, yeah, I don't know. Because oh, yeah, specifications, I, it shouldn't I, I be that easy. I thought this was like a trick video. I think they weren't launching over the barrier. I think they were just launching behind it. Oh, I see. Because, uh, yeah, I, I know the specifications, it makes it, like, according to the specifications, it's really tight, so it shouldn't be able to like, go in that easily. But I feel like if the ball is rolling, uh, it might not actually be that hard to shoot it in. So that's why we're thinking we're going to be trying shooting it in from, like, the other, from the opponent's side, but, like, right where the bar is. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, like, the... when Grant Fox was doing the Q&A about this one, he said that it's supposed to be impossible to shoot them in. So... Yeah, uh, we'll see. Like we, as I said, we don't even have our fields yet, so it's all speculation yeah, right now. But it'd be cool to see what happens. And since the uh, the ball is shaped um, so irregularly, we're going to be making the puncher have like a bigger surface area, so it's able mm -hmm. to shoot it um, and not dent the ball. Especially, I, I heard it's we actually already dented one of them. It's pretty easy to dent. That's interesting. Yeah, you might save some space if you use a puncher versus a catapult. But uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. All right, I guess I, I guess I'm looking forward to the results of catapult because um we're, we we haven't considered that. So so Somil, if I may ask you, what's your plan for building? Like, when are you guys planning to start the build and complete the build? We we've already started building things. For example, we have most of the drive done. We're just waiting okay. on a few parts because uh, we lack some of the gears and uh, we need some screws as well. But we have uh, we have stuff ready, as I showed okay. you the catapult arm and all. So we could probably build and finish a build within three weeks after getting parts and having a cat complete. Okay, no, that's very interesting because we haven't ordered the stuff. We are planning to place an order and get everything by end of uh, this month. And since yeah. uh, most of the students are busy with their exams and all that, so most likely we'll start. I think they'll start doing build uh, first week of June. But uh, okay. yeah, the target is if we we are also planning to complete by end of uh, June at least, uh, and then we'll see some results in early July. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, one thing our team does is that we try to focus on building a first version robot that's uh, like pretty reliable, pretty okay. And then after that, build a more refined one. So it might be okay for us to just do a quick build. Are you planning to attend any early season uh, signature event? We were trying to, but I don't think we were able to make it either through the sign up or from our school. So we're just going to be going to normal ones. And our first signature event should be the one that's called like Galveston ba Battle at the Beach in November. Okay. Okay, do we have time to look at the. Um drive base for the mini swerve. Are you guys interested in seeing our CAD for uh, FRC mini swerve? Sure. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna pull that mini swerve up and talk briefly about that. I guess I should also probably go over and show you our, uh, our swerve drive from the FRC. We had a lot of trouble programming it, but once we got it programmed, it was done. So you can see those four corners. And we, uh, we found it's a lot easier to identify which direction you're going on the field if you have a different color on every corner. So. Sawmill, do we have the CAD? Oh, that's interesting. What's, yeah. interesting. What's interesting. the dimension of this? Uh... This is a 21 inches by 21 inches. Oh, okay, okay. Is this, is this a, just like a prototype or is this for one of the games? This is like a, like a awesome because I've seen the games last month, January to April. So in the offseason, we engage ourselves by making projects like this. But it doesn't have to be like fully real for a game. Oh, okay. And it's a learning tool also, especially for new people that are coming in uh, to have that off season experience to design and build and program. So I would like to leave everybody uh, with some links in the chat to make sure if you didn't see it already um the link to our cad i'm going to repost that and then i'm going to provide a link to some tutorials uh for vex robotics uh how to do vex robotics in fusion 360 if you've not used fusion 360 it should be free educational account one year subscription You'll have to upload a picture of your student ID. Any questions for me? No, I think this is very helpful, David. Thank you so much for organizing this. And I'm looking forward for a great collaboration. Yes, I hope we can do it again. It may not be soon. It might be around July 10th, but I would like to I would like to do it again soon. Um, do you guys get together in the summer frequently or not? 
Yeah, yeah. we actually get together uh, every week. And if not in person, then def definitely we make sure that we connect uh, remotely. But uh, yes, we will be uh, uh, spending more time in summer to complete the build and do some practice. OK, in the meantime, I am now sharing a link to some video tutorials that I put together. And these are introductory. Um, Bex Robotics in Fusion 360. OK. And is there anyone who has had trouble accessing Fusion 360? Because I can also provide a link to the educational community. Fusion 360 Autodesk educational community, is that an interest? Sure, I mean, if you can share those links, uh, I think that'll be helpful. OK. In fact, if you want, David, you can just email me those links. That'll, that'll also work. Then I can forward it to everybody in the group here in Canada. Absolutely. All three of these links that I just put in the chat, I will also email to you in just a few moments. Awesome. Well, this is fun. Uh, we'll talk about doing it again in a couple of months. Like I said, it'll it'll be July. Uh, we have an off season tournament at, for FRC. Okay. Kind of a big deal. And then once we get done with that, we're gonna we're gonna get back in the vex pretty heavy. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye. Enjoy. You too.